Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, and uh, I am welcome back to my home. It's been a very entertaining Easter weekend. We spent a few days in Ireland, and uh, yeah, went over on the ferry, missed the ferry, had to spend 11 hours in Wales. That's where my wordle in a minute in a, in a restaurant with background noise came from a couple of days ago. Um, and yeah, I had to spend some time there. Then we had to... When coming back, uh, I was seasick overnight on the ferry home, which was great, and then had to drive four hours in the small hours to get here. So there we go. If I'm a little green around the gills or bad at solving, it's clearly got to be down to that, and not to any natural inability. We will see how it goes, um, but I'm delighted to be back. And let, I'm delighted, actually, to have a look at this puzzle. This is a brilliant grid. Pillboxes by Allergem. I think when I first solved an Allergem puzzle a few weeks ago, I said, I hope we see more of them. And bingo, here we are. I think Simon's even done a puzzle in the interim as well. So um, Allergem is suddenly quite prolific and very welcome. I love this concept. He's combined Fortress and Killer to create a grid with just four small cages. Um, I'll go through the rules in a minute. Don't forget there is still time to give yourself a right royal nightmare, and that's with a K on the beginning of night, in our Patreon monthly challenge, which is the Nightmare Sudoku Pack by the Skunk Works Collective. Um, I've seen over Easter, we've been getting hundreds of entries in for both for the, uh, for the five puzzle, um, the five puzzle uh, competition entry answer and the 19 puzzle get yourself a shout out on the channel answer. So very well done to all those people who've achieved that. Give yourself a very firm pat on the back. Um, either of those goals is a great achievement. The puzzles are brilliant, by the way. I mean, check them out, fantastic. Anyway, there's other stuff on Patreon. There's all our apps, including our latest second gas app which is proving very popular as well do check them all out on the links under the video but the first link will be to this puzzle pill boxes now um i will go through the rules then i'll say why i think it's called pill boxes so we have the numbers this is regular sudoku rules numbers one to nine in every row every column and every three by three box as per normal um then we have the normal killer rules as well. Digits inside a cage do not repeat and sum to the small clue in the corner of the cage. So these four digits are different and add up to 21. All cages additionally act as fortresses. So each digit inside a cage is greater than its orthogonally adjacent neighbors outside the cage. So that means we could have an eight there, but then in these cells, we couldn't have a nine. We could have four, six, and seven maybe, and they are all obeying the rule. The white cells that border the gray digit are all smaller than the gray digit. So that's how it works. It's a really interesting combination of rule sets. Um, I think Allergem actually said that they, I'm not sure they had a dream about it, but they thought of it while in bed and got out to note down the idea before it went away. And, uh, you know, that way both genius and madness lie, frankly. So... It's going to be a very interesting solve, I reckon. Do give it a try. I think it's called Pillboxes because a pillbox was a name for a kind of small square concrete fortification that you could shoot at tanks out of, I think. Sorry to any military historians who know better than that. But these are kind of little square fortresses. So that's probably why Allergem has called it Pillboxes. There may be some entirely different reason. Uh, give it a try on the first link under the video. I am going to start now. So, with the immortal words, let's get cracking. How and where? Well, look, there's a 19 cage with four cells in it. Now, the interesting thing about the fortress rule is these cells can't be very little, I don't think. So that one... Okay, I'm going to break the normal habit of... Normally, just in case you don't know, when we put a digit in the center of a cell, it's one of the few candidates. So we might put four, five, six in, and they would be the only candidates that could go in that cell. If we put a digit in, say, two, 
corners of cells, then those are the two places in a box where that digit can go. That's the normal notation we use. I'm breaking the habit here because I'm going to just put minima in. So this could be a four because they could be one, two, three. Um, but it has to be at least that because they are all different and smaller. Now in this case, we go down to three because you could have a one and two there. Using the symmetry, I make that a three and that a four. Ah, and this is great because if three is the minimum digit in the cage, then the minimum fill for the cage is three, four, five, six, which adds up to 18. And the actual cage composition must then have one more than that. You can only add one more to the highest digit, so it's three, four, five, seven. And there we go. That is because, yeah, all of these have to be minim. This is complete tripe, isn't it? This is utter bilge and hogwash. It's all wrong, and it's wrong because of this or these box boundaries. Sorry. I was equating that cell, because of the shape of the, 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 the rotationally symmetric shape of the tetromino, I was assuming that cell had the same properties as this, and it absolutely doesn't. And the annoying thing is this can be a two, because those could both be ones. And that would be fine. Oh, bother. And that's because of these box boundaries. So that could actually be a three, with a one, two pair there, and that digit repeated there. And the trouble is, once you've introduced a two into the possible makeup of this cage, well, then eight is possible, six comes back into play. I can't say anything about this cage. Okay, I've gone from having a perfect three, four, five, seven cage to having nothing at all there. And that's my own fault. Sorry, not the right place maybe to start. Oh, this is a. Th I thought this was a 19 cage. This is a 13 cage in three cells. Right, what is the minimum for each one here? This one is a 4. This one is a 2. We do have to bear that in mind because they could both be 1s. This is a 3. I don't know. There's a, still a lot of. None of them can be a one. I don't think anywhere in the puzzle we can have a one in a gray cell. That's just worth banking. Um, so the minimum fill for this is two, three, four, but there's still quite a lot of fills. It could be two, three, well, no, it could be two, three, eight. He says with added ponderous significance. Um, two, four, seven. 256 or 346. So there's still five fills, but none of them involve nine. Yes, this is the better question for this box. Where does nine go in the box? Because it doesn't go in the cage, because that would need a one in the cage. It doesn't go in those cells, because it would be sitting next to a grey cell which had to be bigger than nine. Therefore, it goes in one of these. And I'm wondering if we can pull the same stunt with eights as well. If you put an eight in this cage, it can't be eight, four, one, because one can never be in a gray cell. Now, it can't be eight, three, two either. Look what would happen. You'd have the eight, the, the minimum for these cells is three and two, and that was a minimum four. So if this was eight, three, two, it would have to be disposed like this. But you'd then end up with ones in those two cells, and they stop either of these being a one. That one's in the same box as that one, that one's in the same row and box as that one. So this wouldn't work. So eight can't go in this cage. So eight doesn't go in this cage. Eight doesn't go in those cells because nine can't go in these cells, and now we've got a nine eight pair. Now I'm not saying that's incredibly useful. But I bet we can now consider where seven goes in box one. And it can't be in these cells because you can't put eight or nine in the greys. So seven is now in the cage. It can't be with a one. So it's a seven, four, two cage. Now this, this can't be a two obviously because you can't put ones in all that. In fact, this was the only one that could be a two. So that is a two. 
this can't be a, sorry, it has to be a seven. It can't be a four now, because we have to put three in all those cells. So that's the seven. That's the four, it doesn't work. Oh, it does work. We only, yes, these don't have to add up to four. Sorry, somehow that two being one plus one, which is irrelevant through me, two is more than one and two is more than one. Four is more than this cell, which must be a three, and more than this cell, which now must be a two. And that's a five, six pair. And look, we've got box one largely filled. That's fabulous. Um, now we have to take this to another cage, don't we? Ah, where is Sudoku maybe? Where does two go in column three? It cannot go in these cells. Right, again, we know that one doesn't go in the gray cells. Two is not going in any of these gray cells either. That one, very obviously, because Oops, because they can't all be one. This one, fairly obviously, because neither of those can be one. And that one, because this can't be a one, because of that one that we've got. So this is where two goes in column three. Now, uh, that's not all that helpful. One is in one of those three cells. Ah, now, these have to be at least, what, three and four now. Ah, if they were three and four, these would have to be a five, six pair, which is impossible. That's interesting. Does that mean this is a maximum six now? No. No, it doesn't at all. This could be as low as four and six, adding up to ten, if that was a three, five pair. I mean, I suppose eight is now the maximum in this cell, which has a Minimum of four, because they have to be different and lower. Uh, I don't think you can put a nine in this cage. Oh, you could. Four, nine, five. I mean, these have to be at least four as well. This isn't very good pencil marking in that there's a lot of candidates for these cells. Um, Maybe I have gone to the wrong cage yet again. Ah, okay. It's not so much about these cage cells at first. It's about these cells, maybe. The minimum values for these three cells are three, five, and six, because one, two, and four have been used in the row. Right. If the minimum value for those cells is three, five, and six, isn't the minimum value for these one more than each of those? Four, six, and seven. And we can't use seven. So it feels like these might have to be four, six, and eight. And if that was the case, three is the minimum value here, because these have to be different. So let me just think this through. Three, five, six are, are the minimum values here. So these have to... Yeah, where, I mean, the lowest of these digits could be a three, and that's going to put at least a four here. The lowest of these after the three could be a five, and that would put at least a six here. So these are minima. The next lowest could be a six. Now that can't put a seven here. It's going to have to put an eight here. That is right. Uh, it does not mean that these don't, that these are three, five, seven because eight could be above a six equally, but it does mean they can't contain an eight. This one now is, is given, because eight plus six plus four is 18. This therefore leaves a three here, which is also the minimum digit that it can be. So that is a three, surrounded by a one, two pair. This is clever. This can't be a three, so that's now not the four. So four is in one of these two cells. Four can't be here, actually. That's lovely. Four can't be there, because these would have to be one, two, and three. And what would you do with this cell once one, two, and three are in the box? So that's not four. The four in the box is here. This has to be where the three goes in the row. Um, now, can that be six? No. 
No, it can't, because this would be a 125 triple. And again, what would you do with that cell? That is the 8. This is the 6. 9. Oh, of course, the, the question again, just like in box 1, is where does 9 go? And look, you've got this 8-9 pair ruling out that cell. So 9 goes here. Um, then maybe I could have gone on to ask where does 8 go if it's not in those cells. And we could have worked out it goes here. Okay, I've got to think of think outside the box very literally, outside the, the pill box in this puzzle. That's lovely. Um, right. Eight is there. These are smaller. Oh, they're not one or two. Where does that one or two go in this box? It's got to be here. So that's a one, two pair. These are from five, six, seven, which form a triple with that, and four in the top row goes there. Oh, nine in this row is very obvious. Again, thinking outside the box, hadn't seen it, but it must go there. It can't go here in a white cell touching a grey six. This is why I'm so bad at Fortress. I can't see this stuff. So six gives me five and six there. This is now one or two again. Part of a pair with that. So these are from five, well, five, seven, eight. We've had six. Oh, six is bigger than this. That's five. This we don't know, that's six or seven. These, oh, we do know, that's a seven, eight pair, so this is a six. That's a five, seven pair, right. That feels like it's as much as we can do in the top three rows for now. Now, can we drag this stuff down to box 19, uh, to the 19 cage? Okay. Ah, oh, yes, yes, because we've got two looking at that. I think that's important. Oh, I got that ages ago. I could have maybe applied it to the 19 cage straight away. Didn't think of it, but here we are now. Now, come on, what? That, let's do the minima again. I'm going to do it again, even though it didn't work first time. That is now a minimum four. And was before because one, two, three there. This is a minimum three because one and two there. This has stopped. This has changed. This was minimum three or minimum two before, but now it sees two, three, and four. So this is minimum five. This one actually can't be three or four now. So that's also minimum five. Oh, and now we've gone back to the situation where this is. Since every cell in this is minimum three, if you take three, four, five, six, it adds up to 18. Not enough, we need one more. So it has to be three, four, five, seven. The only place it seems we can put a three is here. The only place to put a four is there. And then this is a five, seven pair. That is beautiful. This is an absolutely extraordinary construction. It's not just that Allergem had this idea. It's that he then put it together in this gorgeous flowing way. That's very clever. Right, that four, I think it gets easier now. That four is surrounded by one, two, three, and we know where three goes because of Sudoku. Uh, we don't know where one and two go yet. This three though, now we're gonna find out, this three has a one and two in the white cells touching it. That's gonna fix one and two there. Oh, it's gonna fix one and two there, one and two there. Suddenly almost all the ones and twos are done. That is brilliant. Um, now, let's keep thinking. Five, seven, right, what digit goes here? In this column, we've only got to put in six, eight, and nine. Well, this can't be eight and eight or nine because it would break the relationship with that cell. So not only is that six, it forces seven into the fortress cell. We get an eight, nine pair there. This is gorgeous. We get a five, six, seven, triple. That can't be six. Now we've got a five, six, seven, triple in the final column. And that's a four, eight pair. And we place a nine here where it's fine. Now, surely we can look at this. Now, I'm ashamed to say, all I'm gonna do at first is tidy up the pencil marks a bit. And that probably won't get me very far. Oh, I don't know. How could this be filled now? It could be, four is the minimum digit. If there is a four, it's four, five, nine, or four, six, eight. 
Four, five, nine only works five, nine, four, but four, six, eight works in various ways. And it could actually be five, six, seven, so no, maybe not. I need to find some other cell. These are at least three and four. Done that before. They're probably three and five. Oh, what about this cell? This sees one, two, three, five in the row, four, nine in the column. By Sudoku, it's six, seven, or eight, but it's got to be less than this digit. And this digit now can't be five or six and have the relationship work. So that's an eight. That sorts out seven, eight up there. That makes this a six. Beautiful. Bounces straight back. Now, these two add up to ten. They are six and four, which is probably what I predicted a moment ago. Six, four, that sorts out four, eight over here. These I can probably finish all these cells around the, the gray boxes now. These are a three, five pair, and we know where they go. These two, this one has to be a four to be less than five. This one, We've got one, three, and nine to place in the row, but it can't be three because of that. It can't be nine because of the fortress. We get a one there. Nine, five, six, one, seven, eight. Oh, now it's just come. Well, I mean, now that we've, I was gonna say finished all the fortress business, but we've still got this cell to put in and it, okay, it's two or five by Sudoku, but it's next to a fortressy four, so it's a two. And that does finish all the fortress stuff. I think we're just tidying up now. This is lovely. Uh, three, seven, I don't know, if, have we got enough information for these? Probably. Well, since Allergem did it, I think we can guarantee it, but it's a bit of a surprise. One there and a three, five pair. Four, seven, six here. We can place the four again, one of the digits. Two, eight, nine. Oh, look, we can do all of those. Two must be in the middle. Eight down there in the row with the nine in. And that is presumably going to sort out a lot of this stuff. There seems to be only one place to put a six in this row. Um, that does nothing else. Yes, here, eight can't be there, so that's an eight. Oh, and I've got this little three sitting there to do the rest of the puzzle for me. Seven, three, it's not in the corner, it's just in a helpful spotlight. Um, so seven and five, seven and five, this is six and five, then we get a six and we finish in the center with a seven. I hope this is right, there we go, the solution's correct. What a brilliant puzzle. That's so good. That's so tiny, neat, and elegant. And I tell you, I've never seen Killer and Fortress work like this, where the, the Killers were full fortresses. It's so... Uh, it's just brilliant. Well done, Alajan. Thank you, as always. Well done if you did the puzzle first as well. Thank you for watching the video if you did or indeed if you didn't and uh, very much hope to see you again soon on the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.